Over 1,500 diabetes educators descended upon the Gold Coast for the ADS ADEA annual scientific meeting last week for all the latest in diabetes research, prevention and treatment. The conference hit all the hot topics, from the falling death toll and improved glycemic control to the rising numbers of medical errors, new gestational diabetes guidelines, patient engagement and mental health. Professor Jane Spade and her team revealed the results of the MILES study, the largest of its kind to focus on the psychosocial aspects of diabetes. So what we found was around half of Australians with diabetes um, said that they weren't receiving um, adequate education and support about their diabetes management. So it seems more likely that it's the ongoing burden of living with diabetes and particularly the use of injections, the adjustments of insulin that are needed and how that then impacts on what you can do and what you can eat and so on that are causing some, di some level of diabetes related distress in those groups. That whole realisation that diabetes is so much more than the numbers and diabetes distress and burnout and the fact that when you've got a chronic health condition there's no holiday and um, you know working with people with diabetes to make sure that whatever management there is to manage their diabetes that whatever they're doing is sustainable. We also spoke to Dr Spiros Fulanos about the widespread errors in diabetes inpatient care. The major findings from this study was that there was a high frequency of errors in medications. In the order of 50% of inpatients had at least one error in relation to either their medication prescription, administration or follow-up management. We feel that the Royal Melbourne Hospital uh, study might be representative of what could be happening in other hospitals in Australia, given it seems to be very much uh, in agreement with the UK data. While we had him in the chair, we asked Dr Fulanos about his research into diabetes onset and the time to myocardial infarction. People who get diagnosed with diabetes at an earlier age, for example in their 30s or 40s, have a greater duration of years in terms of time of developing myocardial infarction compared to someone developing diabetes later in life. However, Given they start younger, they still have a myocardial infarct at a younger age, for example in their 50s or early 60s, as opposed to a 60-year-old who might go on to develop an infarct in a shorter duration of time, but it would still be in their 70s. We even had a visit from an Australian sporting legend. During my time as an elite athlete, I had, I really had no clue that I would wind up with, with diabetes. Um, my daughter is 13 months old. And right before I fell pregnant, I was pre-diabetic. And it was during my pregnancy that I got type 2 diabetes. I surround myself by uh, educational resources, talking to educators, ongoing conversation with my endocrinologist. Uh, so, you know, it's a, it's, not, it's a whole package. It's a lifestyle. So, and it's, it's an attitude too. That's all from us from this year's ADS ADEA conference. Stay tuned for more news at Diabetes Educators Update coming to an inbox near you. Or you can follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. <laughs>